Good morning. Okay, so a lot of people ask me, how are you able to get your colors so bright and vibrant? Or how can you get such good coverage? How has your artwork not got streaked up lines in it? So we're going to go back to this book again, The Real Meaning of Christmas. And for instance, I had done this one. And that red just really pops. And you can see a sheen on the paper. That's because I have so much color packed down in there. We've talked about how there's mountains and valleys in paper. And I have pushed the color down into those valleys. Alright, so today's lesson, these are the colors I'm going to use. Does that even show up? There we go. And this is to do holly leaves. These are Faber-Castell polychromo pencils. All right, so there's your color list. And if you're wanting to join us over on Facebook, the name of the group is Coloring Books Keep It Clean. And we've got, oh, what, I think about 350 ladies on there now, and we just started the group in... March, and I've done over 75 tutorial videos, so I would say we took off with a bang. All right, how to pick my colors. I'm doing Holly, and I have all my colors on here, and there is a video on how to make this. So um, this is my color ring. So I come in here and I say, okay, what colors look good together? Well, those two look good together. So I will pull those and use them at some point on my greenery in this picture. And these two look good together. Hmm, let's go with these two for the holly. And then my surprise or wow color is my purple. And then my brighten it up a little color is my yellow. And then my little pop of color is going to be some red. So you've already got that color list. So let's bring this down. And that little cardinal that I have begun, he is base coated in orange. Mm -hmm. If you want red to pop even more, put some orange under it. If you want orange to pop, put some yellow under it. So now let's zoom in and get going on this holly. There we go. Push my entire color mat up. And then I'm just about going to have to crawl up on the table to do this, but that's okay. Alright, so another thing too. A lot of people, oh, my pencil won't stay sharpened. Don't worry about it. Do you see how dull this is? Now I am going to look for the flattest part of this and put it face down and I'm going in circles. Now I have said this till I am red in the face and people are still not catching it so let me just say it again. Go in circles. Do you see how I'm not getting any streaky lines? I'm not saying there's not a time when you need to go straight or go in a direction to get around a curve. I'm just saying that for the most part, if you will stay in those circles, you're going to eliminate a lot of the work that you're having to do to try to get rid of those straight lines. Because there is too thin paper, you can layer your colors a lot. I mean a lot of layering and get so much more depth. So I've colored the whole thing in this first green. And it's a light, olivey based green. Alright, next I'm going to my yellow. This is my little touch of color where the light is hitting. So I don't want to put it over here where it's tucked under something else. I want to put it out here where the light can actually hit it. 
I'm going to go darkest right there in the tip and then light and fade it out. Now, another wow color is going to be this red, but let's go to the dark green first and let's get in our shadows and our behind areas. This is all behind this, so it's all going to be just a little darker. Now I'm barely touching my page because it's easier to add more layers and make it darker than to try to come back in and erase this. Okay, and fading out very quickly, otherwise you'll have way too much dark on the page. Do you love just sitting watching me paint or color? It's like watching paint dry. <laughs> All right, this is behind this. This is behind this. This is behind this. You got it. It all gets a little bit of deep. Just a little. Doesn't have to go very far. And see, I've got a few lines in there, and it's because of the way I did the pencil. And I say coloring and painting interchangeably when we're doing colored pencils. There are colored pencil artists out there and they call it painting because it is what they do. And to them, you're adding the color, you're laying it on there, so you're painting. And I started doing these in real time and letting you watch so that you realize how much time this really takes. Now, this color is getting to be the same as this. That's where that purple is going to come in and be my wow factor. Okay? And I'm going to start using a lot of purple in my work because people are not remembering that purple is a shadow color. Go outside and think purple and look at your shadow. Your shadow is not black. Not here in Texas, it's not. There's a lot of purple in that. Okay, so now I've based that in pretty good. Now I'm going to come back and let's use the purple next. Alright, now's my chance to get this even darker. And see, it's not coming across as purple. Not really. It's just coming across as a dark color and it's blending in nicely with that green. I'm going to put a little here, just a touch right there at the edge, so you can't even see that hardly. And then I am going to lay a little bit right in here. And then I turn it into circles. Alright, now my pop of wow color is my red. Now a lot of times you can hear when I'm using color you're not going to hear when this red goes on. Very sparingly, it will take over your, your picture like nobody's business if you do very much of it. But I want just enough to even it out from over there. And this will be reflective light from the bird and from all these berries. In fact, let's get an orange real quick. And this one is number 111. I just grabbed one off the table. And just circles. Much easier to make a circle in a circle than to try to go up and down or sideways in it. Get the right shape in there. And your coloring is so much easier. Okay, so there's that. And then we're going to go to this red. There we go. Just put that red in there. We still have a lot of white shining through. I'm going to keep my red, the second coat here that I'm doing, up at the top. And this one I'm going to do the whole thing. 
This one I probably should do the whole thing. This one it's going to be over on this side where I'm going to put more. The reason is I'm going to come back with a darker red and tuck right in there for a shadow. So you can do the first layer all over and then your second layer where there's not a shadow. Just trying to get rid of all those little white dots that are the um, hills and valleys in the paper. If you don't subscribe to my videos, you're more than welcome to. It'll, I believe it'll pop up in your email that you're signed in with and tell you when I've got a new one going. Alright, now I can come in with a deeper red. This one is number 217. And I can get that other layer in right there. See how that just made that one look like it was behind the others? Getting shadows in. It's how your art's going to look a little more realistic. Shadows are on the bottom. And now I know I can come back in and do a little bit more here. You can always come back with your lightest color to blend. So even though those are so tiny, I'm still able to do that. Okay, back to our leaf. I'm going to come back to my first color because I've already done my purple, my dark green my red, my yellow, and I'm going to blend it all. And see, I still have not sharpened this pencil. If I wanted a sharper part, I would turn the pencil until I saw this edge and then stand it up on that edge and be able to get in any little spots I needed. But for now, I like it with the flat edge because I'm not getting all those lines. But now I'm coming in and I'm just blending everything. Using the lighter color of green to blend. I'm not using yellow, which is the lightest color on the piece, because I don't want the whole leaf to turn yellow on me. Okay? I like this green. So that yellow is just an undercoat to make this green pop. And see, I'm making several passes over this. Can you see the difference in where it started with and where it is now? Alright, so just several passes. Just keep going over it. And see that bit of red on there really just, to me, it just lets it be a little more realistic. Okay, so there's my holly. Leaves are all done. And I am going to go ahead and stop this video and go post it. And then I will come back later and start in on the bird. And um, then after that, I will do some trees and snow. And there's a ribbon in here, and there's a ribbon on another page. So I'll do another one on ribbons. But anyway, yeah, lots of layers, y'all. Lots of layers.